Hello, music lovers. Welcome back. What do we have here? John Summit has just remixed I Remember by Dead Mouse and Cascade. I feel a video coming on. Because if you've ever tried to remix or bootleg or mash up this track, or if you've ever tried to make one yourself, I'm going to take a wild guess that you may have struggled to do so. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not alone. There's a few reasons for this. The first one is something called multi-tonality. We need to look at that. Then we need to look at something called borrowed chords. And also how the order in which you produce in affects your results. Let's go. For those of you who didn't see my video on sampling chords, we need to run over some basics. So, typically a track is built on a tonal center, what we call its key. The key is the starting point, and after that we need to choose a vibe, a flavor. We do that with something called the scale. The scale is basically like a color palette. It's just a selection of notes, usually seven, that all work together. So, in summary, the key is the starting point, and that scale pattern creates the vibe. So when we make a track to keep things sounding coherent, we make sure all of the tonal elements in our track, like our bass, our melodies, our chords, we make sure all of those stick to the notes of the scale. That way, the vibe of every part will match. Okay, so that's the fundamentals out of the way. Now you ask, what is so remarkable about Dead Mouse and Cascades I Remember? Well, two common scales which you will have come across by now are major and minor. Each one being a selection of seven notes with its own pattern. Now playing in the background, you can hear the chords for I Remember. And we're going to play a little game. Guess the scale. So, most DJ software reports this to be in B minor. So let's turn on our scale function here. Set that to B minor. Now it's going to highlight all the notes of B minor on the left in blue. Let's check. So obviously B, B works. F sharp, yes, correct. B again, no problem. What do we have here though? D sharp. No, that is not in B minor. D sharp is actually in B major. Let's swap to major. As you can see, D sharp here is in B major, as is the B, obviously, and our F sharp. So it's in B major, right? But look at this. Straight away, we have another problem. The next chord has a D and an A. Those are not in B major. Hmm, weird. Let's have a quick look at the melody. See if that makes anything clearer. So we're set to B major. Yes, the beginning of this all works. This D sharp. That's all in B major, except this D natural here. Oh dear. Again, that's neither B major or B minor. So what is going on? At this point, you might be thinking, it's going to be like that Tech House video I did, where I reveal to you that there is another scale you're not aware of, like Phrygian we did that week. Could it be Dorian? Could it be Lydian? There are quite a lot of others, after all. And to those presumers, I would say, how dare you? Do you think I would build it up for this long if it was just another scale? <laughs> nope, I'll save you searching your scales list. There is no scale that fits all these notes. I remember is what we call multi-tonal. It's actually in multiple scales at different times. Crazy, right? Let me explain. This first chord here, and this fourth chord, at those points in time, the track is in B major. For these other chords, 
At that point in time, the track is in minor. So it's a multitonic or multitonal track, swapping between major and minor. At those points in time, everything swaps, the vocal, the bass, the chords. Very unusual, especially for an electronic dance track. Another way you can think about this is in terms of what we call borrowed chords. So because more of the chords are from minor than major, we can say the track is in B minor, except the first chord and the fourth chord there are borrowed from B major. Whichever way you look at it, one thing that's obvious is that this vocal was written to these chords, not the other way around. Unless they are from a classical or jazz background, you don't find many vocalists that just swap between major and minor. <laughs> it's probably why you don't see many Nine Inch Nails remixes either. One of my favourite composers, Trent Reznor, he uses this trick a lot too. The chances of you finding a standard chord progression to fit with this kind of vocal is practically nil. So now you know why it doesn't mash up with anything. Speaking on the John Summit remix for a moment, as you would suspect, he has used the original chord progression. Like I say, you'd be hard pressed to find any other chords that work with that vocal. It's just too bespoke. In fact, I don't think he's just used the same chords, I think he's used the actual MIDI from the original. Because this arpeggio line in his track, when I use the same chord MIDI myself, and dragged on Ableton's inbuilt arpeggiator, the default setting gave me the same ARP line as John. We know what you did, John. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now when anyone asks you, do you know any multitonal tracks in dance music? You can say yes. Dead Mouse and Cascades, I remember. You never know, it might come up in a pub quiz or something. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you learned something. If you did, hit some buttons that help me out. There's also a link in the description to buy me a coffee if you're feeling extra generous. And until next week, I'll see you in the comments. Bye-bye.